Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am super excited to be here today with my colleague, Joy, and I know I butcher your last name all the time. So Joy, will you say your last name for me, please? Joy Buffalini. But if you were in Italy, it would be Buffalini. So but some people oh, know that. Okay. Well, who are your well I feel a little Buffalini. They're both fine. <laughs> I feel a little better then because I always want to say Buffalini. That's actually the correct way to say it, but it's been Americanized. So what can I say? <laughs> Buffalini. There okay. Go. And, you know, it really is spelled exactly like it sounds, except for that, do you go boo or ba? Right. So, um, <laughs> great. <laughs> Joy, it's just such a perfect name for you because you are so joyful. And you have been in the coaching industry for 10 years and have been featured in both Entrepreneur Magazine and, drumroll please, O Magazine. Yes, I mean the big O, Oprah. <laughs> uh, and I am so very, very jealous and can't wait to talk with you a little bit about that, what that experience was like. She also uses her signature simplify to multiply method and philosophy to build her own seven-figure business and help her clients double and triple their sales without doing any launches, webinars, sales funnels, or ads. Yes, people, hold on to your seats because we're going to get the inside scoop on how the heck she's done that. So, Joy, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thanks for having me, Kathy. I can't wait to have these conversations and um, share with your audience and inspire them to, to dare to leap as well, like both of us have done. Yeah, thank you so much. And that's exactly where I'd like to start. You have a very inspiring story, and I'd love for you to tell us about your journey. Oh, thank you for asking. Well, it's kind of funny. I was kind of an unlikely entrepreneur. Um, I went to college, always planned on being a teacher. That's just, I love teaching. And it was kind of like, mm, I married my high school sweetheart, you know, like, life's just planned out, right? You're gonna have this fairy tale life. And I, I taught middle school math and science for four years and I found out I was pregnant with twins. How fun is that, right? I'm gonna have Ooh. twins my first, you know, and have twins. And, and so unexpectedly though, they were born very, very early. And my daughter had some significant brain damage at birth. We didn't even know if she was gonna make it, you know, her first few mm -hmm. weeks. And literally the next few years were very traumatic and surgeries and life and death situations and just life turned a totally different direction. And of course, being a teacher and trying to be super mom, I completely burnt myself out, um, mm -hmm. had another baby as well, you know, which was such a blessing. And, you know, to have one baby, it was like so easy after having twins. <laughs> but I had a very oh, only one. Right, only one. I thought they always came in pairs. Anyway, um, but by the time they were seven or eight years old, the twins were seven or eight years old, I was having some serious burnout, serious health challenges. And I really never realized that there was this whole emotional side of this that I needed to deal with. You know, I just suppress my emotions and carry on and be super mom. And, you know, my daughter needs therapy how many times a week and surgeries and doctor's appointments. So, you know, you just go into, I called it robot mode, unfortunately, right? I was in robot mode yes. to help her survive yeah. and try to thrive. Um, but I crashed and burned, you know, call it nervous breakdown, whatever you want. I sort of became non-functional and had to, to rebuild from the inside out, really learn how to reframe, you know, what life was going to look like now. Because suddenly realized my daughter is not going to, you know, she's going to be handicapped for life, you know, and you kind of get that reality check at some point. So um, I went through some therapy and, and learned a lot of different mindset modalities. And I eventually worked with a life coach, which I didn't even know was a thing. This is 2008. I didn't even know that was, you know, really a thing. I guess more like 2010, actually. 2008 is kind of when I started this whole journey. And I worked with a life coach and this light bulb moment went off for me that this is my, this coaching, this is my next step. And I really needed 
a, a life's purpose outside of being special needs mom too. That was important for me. So I started my business. I got life coach certified. I started my business from a place of, I wanted to help others. I had learned so much and it was also an outlet for me. I wasn't so worried about making money initially. I just wanted to help some people. And, you know, it was a great, a great side thing for me. And, um, but after a couple of years and my daughter started to stabilize, I'm like, I need to be making money. I mean, we, I need to go get a job or we need, I need to be making money. And I had started doing all the things, um, you know, all the, all the courses, all the programs, all the free webinars, you know, all the things you do your first couple of years in business when you're just trying to consume and learn and, and implement. And I went a full five years, never making more than $20,000 in a year. And I got to this point where I'm like, I'm either going to go all in here and really figure this out, or I'm just going to go get a job. You know, like you get to that yep. point where it's like, you absolutely. Have to draw a line in the sand. Yep, I've heard that many times. Yeah. And at the same time, concurrently, synchronously, um, somebody asked me to lead a local networking group that I had been going to. And can Joy, can you lead it? Sure. Well, it just happened to be a group of women entrepreneurs. And I'm a life coach and thinking I've learned a lot of business stuff. I haven't really done too well myself, but I started finding like my own kind of my own way here, you know, and this is a note to everybody when you're growing, like notice the nudges and the synchronicities and the opportunities when they start feeling really good to follow them. And this group started growing into a large networking group. And all of a sudden, something shifted inside of me. It really was a decision. My husband remembers, <laughs> he calls it the pillow moment, threw a pillow across the room, said an expletive, which was very unlike me. <laughs> I'm going to make six figures. <laughs> and he was like, okay. After kind of trying to support me and not discourage me, because I've tried and I tried to fail a lot at that point, at least in my mind. Anyway, um, but I set a goal to make a 50,000 in that next year. And that would be huge. And I could pay for my son's private school because he had some learning needs from being born early and um, some extra things for my daughter too. And 50 would be great. And that year I made six figures. I did it. Like I, I went from 20 to you doubled your goal. I went, yeah, went from 20 to 104 in, in 12 months. That's awesome. And it's like, there was something, there was a switch that flipped there. And this is important moment for everyone because I thought I had decided like no more messing around, but internally I really wasn't all in. Like I still was playing small in a lot of ways, right? And yes. the other thing I did was I wrote a list. I was doing like a gazillion different things and none of them were really working that well, right? I wrote a list of five things, this, 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 this. And literally I put it on the shelf and I went and did it. And what I realized was I kept it simple. I mm. kept it simple. And that's so instead normal. of doing every kind of marketing there was and every kind of promo there was, you picked five things I and picked focused five just on that. Things and focus just on that and doing them really, really well and just fine tuning and mastering my message, you know, with those five things. And I honestly didn't even find that paper till we moved two years ago. Like I didn't, I forgot about it. I just did it, right? I didn't have to. Uh -huh obsess over it or like what am I supposed to be doing like I just decided I knew what to do and kept it simple and that's really honestly how my simplified a multiplied brand was born because I realized I naturally keep it simple in every other area of my life that's what I'm good at but I wasn't doing that in my business I was getting caught up in the trap of doing all the things so um yeah you can you can experience growth really quickly and then I doubled after that and have built a seven-figure business since then um in just the last few years that um once you really hone in a few things and do them really well you can grow really quickly and if you don't get caught on all the rabbit trails <laughs> rabbit trails There's a lot that will <laughs> a lot of time and money if you yeah. allow it to oh and time I, really is money so is. you're wasting even if you're not spending money on ads or mm -hmm. programs mm -hmm. or software um and i can keep naming things um, so <laughs> <many>. Absolutely. <laughs> um you're still wasting time which is money yeah exactly. so congratulations on all of your success yeah. it's now you great. said um, in the journey, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> so I want to go back to a couple of things that you mentioned. Um, you said that 
once you started in this networking group, which that's actually how you and I met. Um, one of the virtual experts in my training program, Cindy Winslow, was in that group. That group. And just every time she would go to an event, she would come back and go, oh my gosh, <laughs> Joy is amazing. You have to meet Joy. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I know I have to meet Joy um, because you know I really love Cindy and I value her recommendations. You do have a very special group mm -hmm. in your area there. I mean, it mm -hmm. is a powerful women's group and I am so impressed with it. Thank you but so you much. said you were, you were starting to do that. And then something, uh, uh, something switched in yeah. your mind. Yeah. Do you know how that switch happened or exactly what that switch was? Can you describe it? Can you help people who need that switch? Absolutely. Yeah. So the year before that, I, I pick a word for the year every year. I started it probably right around the time things started to shift. I started doing that. And the word was visibility, right? Like, and everybody says they need more visibility, but I mean, I yes. committed to it that I was going to get more visible online and connecting and in person. Although I don't know, whenever this goes out, when we're recording this. Yeah, now, that's all right. Co we can talk about COVID. I mean, we can't do much. much we're in the COVID time. Yes. Absolutely. In person isn't possible anymore. Right. But there's so much you can do on Zoom and getting visible and putting yourself out there. Yes. And so I just kept doing things that felt outside of my comfort zone and then finding like, where's my spot? Where's my vo voice? Who are my people? I did it with a lot of trial and error, but consistency and perseverance right? Not what I was doing before that was I was hiding behind my computer, <laughs> you know, and it was safe and secure. And there was no, there was no, you know, it, you, there's no vulnerability there. There's no getting it right. wrong there. Yes. Um, and that's really getting myself past that and not worrying about what people think or worry about people in my family. Like, what is she doing? Cause they always saw me as <laughs> and mom. And now all of a sudden, like, you're yes. they didn't even know what an online business was, right? Or a right. was or anything like that. They kind of understood right. the working group thing that I had started. And that got really big and, you know, got published about like, oh, what are you doing? You're, <laughs> you know, it's interesting, like your identity shifts in a lot of ways as you grow as an entrepreneur, but yet in some ways you're going back to the roots of who you really were. And that's what I found to be true. Like it was jo actually was joy in the middle school classroom who was such a great teacher and knew how to keep it simple and teach math and science. And so, well, it was really the same joy, right? Who helps her clients have 50K a month, you know, or grow to six figures for mm -hmm. the first time, right? So there's, it's, it's all inside of you, right? But, but when you're hiding behind your computer and playing it safe all the time, you're not going to see it. So then you won't believe in yourself. Right. Absolutely. And I really, Joy, I see it every day. And in fact, sometimes I can fall back into that trap also of when was the last time I did a Facebook live? When was the last time I really just put myself out there in public rather than just to my group? Right. Um, the so there's all different right. levels of visibility. Yeah. Is. Yeah, there really is. And, and that consistent visibility in front of new people is with a message that I know converts. And those are things that you learn over time and you fine tune is what's helped me to scale and my clients to scale without having to run Facebook ads, right? They don't need this huge audience. If you really know how to organically, incrementally, just keep growing, keep growing, keep getting in front of more of like, I call it your yes client, like really knowing who's your yes client and getting in front of them in multiple different ways and different platforms. Um, you can really grow and scale without all those extra things that really can, can bog down, you know, bog you down metrics and, you know, all of these funnels. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, right? But if it's bogging you down and your growth is incremental, you need a simpler model. <laughs> yeah. And it's also extremely expensive. It is. Um, so it your is. profit margin exactly. really suffers exactly. when you spend a lot of money on Facebook ads and sure. everything else you can spend a lot of money on. Yeah. There's, there's a ton of, a ton of things tech can, you can have a tech heavy business, which, you know, it works for some people. If you're making enough money, you know, if you're over a million right. profit margin makes sense. You, okay. You end up with net $200,000. If you're good with that, cool. You know, it's, there's a yeah. business model for everyone, but most of the women that I talk with or, or men who are in that growing phase, like they want to get to, let's say 20 K 30 K months. 
Um, mm -hmm. It's happening way too slowly because they're trying to do more of these things that the, the more advanced strategies that they really don't need. That. Yes. You, you don't need complicated yes. software when you're still growing to 20, 30 K months. You don't need tons of tech and team. Um, it's just really, it's just really a lot of things that aren't necessary. It, it don't move the needle forward for you. Yeah, I, t I totally agree with you. I have that same philosophy. Um, in fact, I just did a webinar um, as a gift to my group um, over Christmas, which was, I just called it one, two, three marketing. Number <laughs> one, do this one thing until you have it systemized. Yep. Don't think about anything else. Just do this. Yes. And, you know, talked talked about how to do that. Got that done. You're doing that consistently. Congratulations. Now you can move on to number two and none of them cost anything to do. Exactly. Right? Exactly. But just like you said, they were all like, I'm, I'm going to buy a beautiful logo and I'm going to, I don't know about you, but I didn't have a logo until like four years ago. And I've been in business since 2001. Yeah. The website, honestly, <laughs> very few of the people listening need to have a, a high converting website because clients you probably aren't coming to you through SEO. Some industries that's true, um, but it does not need to be all that you think it does, you know, and it's really, if perfect. you're a service-based professional, yeah. Um, you're, that's not where people are going to find you as much. Yes. You want to have something like that. Yeah. Um, it can be a LinkedIn professional page. Sure. It can be a Facebook business page. Yeah. The um, most important thing is what you're saying, how you say yes. who you help and how you help them in a unique and differentiated way, right. To solve whatever challenge that they're facing, um, with the service um, that you deliver. That's, that's so important. But I mean, how often does our mind just make it complicated? Sometimes we make it complicated as a form of self-sabotage too, right? Like if I oh, make yes. it really hard, I stay here in my comfort zone. It's, it's yes. really a thing. And some of my clients, like when they start simplifying their model and they free up more hours, it's almost like there's this vacuum, like, what do I do with myself? Should I be worrying about something? Is my business okay? <laughs> you know? Right, right. <laughs> They're used to being busy. They think busy equals success. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so how do you get them to uh, simplify? How do you talk with them about that? Because I know a lot of what you do is mindset work. Is that what you call it? Mindset work? No, it's very much integrated with the strategy work. And it's interesting because I don't lead with mindset, but okay. the work that we do in shifting your model and your message and how you run your business and that CEO energy facilitates mm -hmm. mindset shifts. You know, it facilitates mm -hmm. that because all of my clients, my clients will experience like this kind of resistance and all oh, discomfort. And like, that's all important. It's, it's good to, to feel some of that discomfort as you grow, you know, and it, it does facilitate those shifts. And um, then you can be in that good energy to attract the things that you want. Like you mentioned about, I have a funny story about, it is actually about a website. Um, you mentioned about the O Magazine. <laughs> okay. So funny. Yeah. Story fill us in about the O Magazine. Yeah. This is a little bit of a like woo mindset thing. Um, what was it? Early 2018. I I was gonna redo my have have my web designer, you know, redo, redo some things on my website. And I had a couple logos of things I'd been featured in, but I just had this random, you know, thought of just just non-attached. Wouldn't it be cool to have some major media? I would really love to have some major media. Should I like go hire a PR consultant? Should I do this? Oh, I don't know. I was like not attached to it, right? And I was like, that, that would be neat. But I wasn't like, I have to have that in order to be successful, right? Like my business was already doing, doing quite well by then. And anyway, two hours later, there in my email inbox was, I don't remember exactly what the subject line was, like something like, we'd like to feature you in O Magazine. Okay, this has to be spam. <laughs> right? Yeah, I open the email and it's, it's this is this and you know, and this is for the Pittsburgh market where I was living at the time so they do local features of local successful business owners. 
um, that goes out to that Pittsburgh market of like, I don't know, some so hundred thousand people. And I had to Google the person's name, like, is this spam or is this for real? <laughs> right. I would have done the same thing. This is, no, this is legit. And he is asking me to call him. Well, because of the large networking group and some speaking I'd done, like my name had gotten around in the area. So um, the magazine- Because you got visible. Because, because you got, got visible. visible. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, so they have scouts in every city, you know, for local features. And they said, we'd like to feature you. I, and I about fell over. So I, I literally just had this thought this morning. I had to, you know, I called my husband, Brian. I was like, I can't believe this. You know? <laughs> this, you know, this is real. So yeah. So a couple months, I about before. fell over when I saw right. that you were going to be in there. I can't even imagine actually being you and having that. Oh, it was so, seriously. It I was, so I was excited that I knew someone that was going right. to be in the magazine. <laughs> it was really crazy. Like, when's it going to come in the mail? When's it going to come in the mail? You know, like just opening and like, wow. Okay. All right. And, but things like that, actually can be triggering. And it was a little triggering for me, like all of a sudden, like, mm. you know, it's kind of crazy, you know, it was my hometown, who's going to see it? What are they going to think? Are they going to think I'm too big for my britches? And all of these things, as you get more visible are all normal. All this head trash will come up and you realize I'm okay. I didn't die. <laughs> people ask you questions about it, especially family, you know, they're genuinely interested, you know, and it was yes. one of those things for me, like it made what I was doing that a lot of people in my life who were entrepreneurs didn't get. So like, Oh, she's doing a real thing. I had already outpaced yeah. my husband in income, but I wasn't talking about it. You know, he had a really good right. job and, you know, I was just doing my thing, but it, it's just like, there's these little things that when you get visible, sometimes one little thing can propel you upward, which is, you know, mm -hmm. amazing and awesome. And it'll trigger you a little bit, but then it, it builds this new level of confidence muscle in yourself too. And what mm -hmm. you're doing, yeah. you know, like I'm real, I'm legit and I'm growing and I'm going to go for the bigger goals. <laughs> Yeah. So, but you have to take that first step, right? And, and sometimes have thoughts and dreams and goals for the bigger things, you know, of what you want. What do you want? You know, actually put it out there. You know, you don't always have to mm -hmm. have, figure it out in the moment, but kind of magical things can happen too at the same time. That is, I love magical. That is yeah. so wonderful. That <laughs> it is keeps great. Life fun. It keeps life fun and interesting. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I experienced a, uh, something very similar. I didn't get in a magazine as big as Oprah, but I had an article in Forbes that went out and that went out in 2019. Like I said, I've been running my business since 2001. My husband was able to retire as a result and he's got a huge family and you know never really said anything about my business or anything like sure. that which is cool i mean i don't expect people to talk with me about my business um and when that forbes article went out they called and said oh you have a real business <laughs> like, what do you think i've been doing all this stuff oh they're just sitting at home you know watching <laughs> netflix and you know. eating bonbons <laughs> oh my goodness even one of my one of my family members i won't name them of course all love to them but they had this idea that i was coaching women who were like making beads in their basement you know <laughs> these are serious serious women who yeah. are serious right women, right you know right right and i get it the exactly the world is much different and no no judgment on anybody who wants to do beads in the no beads. no right right you know but yeah. I know most everyone listening to this podcast you know they they have some big dreams and goals and impact that they want to make and um yeah it's interesting how that reflection is from from family members or yeah people you used to work with potentially if you're leaving your job and you're starting an entrepreneurial right. venture that your colleagues might not get it you may get some questions that almost feel like criticism because they just generally yes. don't understand i used to right. actually used to have that happen to me with my daughter and I realized, oh, I'm doing the same thing with my business. When someone asked me questions about my business, some people would ask me questions about Amber because she was obviously disabled. That to me felt almost offensive, right? Oh, but yeah. it, they were genuinely just wanting to know if she was okay, right? And right, if right. one of my family members is asking about my business, they genuinely just most likely just want to know like, 
you know, what is right. this that you're doing? I'm genuinely interested, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Well, I want to mention that one of the most touching and powerful things that I've experienced in watching you um, in your videos and when you're live on Facebook is you having your daughter Amber there with you. Mm -hmm. It is just the way you interact with her and the way she is with you is beautiful. Thank you. For and you should that. be so proud. And she's so lucky to have you as a mama. Thank you. She's really been my, my gut, basically like my guiding light. You know, if you want to think of my spirit guide or guiding angel yeah. or whatever you want to call it, like her way of being in the world is simple, right? She's not never yeah. developed past a two-year-old maturity level and she's 20 now, you know, and, but that it's a good reminder to stay. She stays present. She keeps it simple, you know, that, that she doesn't mm -hmm. have all this head trash that we get caught up in. Yeah. And it's just a great model of way of being. And it, it's, it reminds me back to the heart and soul of like, I never would have been doing all of this had it not been for Amber and how she was born and how she came into this world. It was truly personally life transformational for me, her brothers, you know, my husband who I've now retired out and works in my business too. And now we live near the beach, awesome. you know, where we've always wanted to live. <laughs> and, where do you live you know, now? Oh yeah. You live in Florida now, don't yes. you? Yes. We're in Clearwater, Florida. So uh, awesome. So it's basically that location. We said someday when the kids are grown, we'll move back there. We vacationed here, you know, years ago. Yes. And because of my business, you know, it's like, we can do it now, you know, we can right. go to homes and, you know, that's okay. And right. make life choices a lot sooner. And there's so much opportunity yeah. and freedom that comes from being able to really own the fact you want to make a lot of money, <laughs> have a simple plan to do it. And, um, you know, it's really fulfilling seeing how there's the ripple effects, right. To the people you're serving and to your family. Yes. And, and just for the well being of a, of a lot of people in, in your world at the same time, you know, I know yeah. you train, uh, women to become VAs and right. it, it, it can allow you so much freedom and flexibility, especially now during oh, yeah. the time of COVID. What a better, Oh time my gosh. My business. Like, you know, the whole world has changed as a result of it. Um, and for those who have, you know, gotten themselves online and really staying focused and committed, not beating themselves up and working, you know, 60, 70 hours a week. No, you don't have to do exactly. That. Um, you really can keep it simple. And it's, it's honestly a time of great opportunity for building a new lifestyle. Oh my gosh. It is such an opportunity. I don't, those people, um, I, I see like two different levels of people. I see those who are still like, well, it's time off and I'm just going to take time off and relax and uh, not even think about anything else. And they almost have that victim attitude. There's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. And those who are like, okay, uh, what is that saying? Um, with, uh, with not tragedy with something comes opportunity. Oh, well, I, all I can think of is, um, Spider-Man with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> So I like that one too. I like that, I, one, I like too. that one too. Yeah. I like that one too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there is great opportunity uh, right now without it. Yeah. Doubt. I mean, it, there's amazing opportunity right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, in the online world. And you don't have to already have an online business to take advantage of it. Now's the time to jump on board. And if you do have an online business, keep it going. So those, those who are listening and they're like, okay, I have an online business and it's not simple. What tips do you have for people to begin to figure out how to simplify? Yes. Great question. So first of all, look, look at your business model and your business model consists of your offers your marketing and your sales process, right? And some team if you have them as well, but we'll, we'll put that to, to the side right now. It's really your offers, how you deliver them, how you position them, okay? So like some people, their business doesn't feel simple because the way they serve so many different client avatars, like they're recreating the wheel with every client, right? And they're just doing something different. If you hone in and this is not quite the same as niching, okay? This is more honing in the process you walk your customer, your, your clients through 
maybe customers, whatever you call them. Um, if you hone in on your process, you can serve more people without working more hours, without having to, to redo things over and over and over again, right? So you're just really like, here's my ideal client, here's what they need. Um, I, I teach offers in a way that you view an offer as a bridge that takes a person from a point A, one side of the bridge, to a point B, the other side of the bridge. What do they, what needs to be on the bridge for them to get from that point A to that point B, right? And it doesn't have to be one-to-one -one coaching. It doesn't have to be just group calls. It doesn't have to be just a course. Like there are hybrid models that you can make work with your business so that your clients, you know, get whatever deliverables that you want them to get. You know, it doesn't have to be just coaching or transformation. You know, they get to go from not having this to having this in place for themselves, right? And what's that process you walk them through? And then it just becomes so much easier to deliver and to scale to bring in more people into your offer. So that's probably one, that's a big area right there where right away we can find ways to still deliver great, but, but really buy back some time, um, and complication. And let me just pause you for a second there. Yeah. So is part of what you're talking about also automation. So automate <laughs> when you decide what that is yeah. automating mm -hmm. it. So you don't have to touch it every time. Yes, exactly. So you don't have to touch it every time. For instance, when, when, when someone comes into one of my coaching programs, um, each one of them, there is content that they walk through right, on their own too, that supplements what we're doing, right, in one-to-one -one calls and group calls that they process through. So I've served enough of a similar client, right, and there's more customization on my higher-end programs, of course, um, but enough of them that I know what they need, and they don't need me one-to-one, -one, right, to do it. I do, I can do this right. with that, right, so you're exactly right. I'm not touch, I'm not sending them every piece of content, you know, at all, it, and I'm so simple about it, too, like, it sits in a Facebook group, <laughs> for the program, right? And and they can, there yeah. it is, right there. Here's what step one, step two, step three. And, you know, we engage mm -hmm. um, while they're going through it and, and with the coaching. So it is, it's not having to have a touch point with you for every little step. Um, so, and that does sometimes when my clients first start doing that, it kind of, it's like a deep dive into like, who do I want to serve? How do I want to serve them? What fits my lifestyle? You know, if you have kids at home, maybe you don't want to do any one-to-one -one coaching, you know, that's fine. Or any one-to-one. -one right. A lot of people don't want to. Or consultations, right. You can absolutely, mm -hmm. you know, get someone that result that they want without having to be, you know, everything to everyone all of the time. Right. The other part that's a lot of people are very inefficient with that gets complicated is that marketing piece, right? Sharing con they're sharing content on 10 different platforms. They're they're not clear what their core message is. And not just mm -hmm. the core message, but the core message that converts. That's the important yes. part. Sometimes you have to spend a little time doing a little testing on that. You know, what am I saying? That's actually leading to sales, right? And and really mm -hmm. and sales to that client you want to work with that exactly. you talked about before, right? Because right. yeah. you, like, you can oh, sell people you don't want to work with. Totally, <laughs> unqualified leads, and you realize like I'm speaking yes. to someone who is not far enough left along in their journey, right? Or you know maybe you want to work with a more advanced person. Um, you have mm -hmm. to change your languaging around that and and how they work right. with it. So really, um, really getting some um, insight on that. And you don't have to post in 10 different places. I mean, I post on Instagram. You'll see me posting on Instagram, but that's actually my social media manager doing that, you know, and I'm on Facebook and email and that's it, right? Like I just choose not to be anywhere else. Keep it simple yeah. and just do it really well. So I, I advise pick one platform, do it really, really well. You can have a secondary one that like you know, either you or eventually, you know, one of your team can cross post mm -hmm. you, you check in on every now and then. So really simplify the marketing. I don't have any landing pages or any sales, sales funnels, zero period. It's all just organic marketing through social media and email. So it just simplifies. It takes out the tech. You know, I do have like two opt-ins that you'll find in different places, but those were set up, you know, some time ago, we don't you have to do much with them. You know, they just, convert. So you really don't need all of these. And you don't always, you know, low, a lot of people assume you need low ticket offers before people will buy high ticket offers. And that's a model and it works for some people, but I just want to debunk the myth. 
you do not have to have low ticket offers. I don't have any. Joy, I totally agree with you. Everybody told me I had to have an exactly. uh, entry point offer Tripwire and then a, and the next, those. yeah, so Tripwire and then the next level right. until you get to the high ticket. I always only had a high ticket offer. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, in my world, you know, it, it's, it's all high ticket clients who are further a little bit, they're not, I don't work with beginner entrepreneurs, but those who have been in business right. for at least a year or two and are making sales and all of that for my entry level. And that's a conscious choice. I, I did work with beginners for a little while and it's a conscious choice because I want to help more women who are further along in their journey. Um, but it's like, you don't have to be everything to everyone, but your core message, you want to speak to your highest converting clients, right? So whatever yes. your higher level offer is, you really want to make sure you master that messaging, especially people will come mm -hmm. in for your other offers who aren't quite ready for that. They aspirationally want to be your high ticket client, right? Who's ready for this, yes. you know, this, yes. this thing, right? They aspirationally want right. to be there. So don't shortchange or play small in your marketing just because, well, I got to keep selling this, you know, $200 thing. Um, I generally advise my clients to focus your message on your 5K client or your 10K client. That yes, avatar, you'll sell the other ones too. You know, there, there, there will be people that that's right for. So, and then the third part of simplification is that sales process and sales for some people is like some women just hate sales. <laughs> some oh, I hear you. Um, or some just the majority, majority hate it. The yeah. majority I know hate it. Right. They think it's slimy, slimy, sleazy. They think, you know, I'm trying to convince yeah. someone and right. I got to use these tactics and, you know, objection handle and all this. I don't like that either. Right. I don't like that either. I don't either. So I don't like that either. So I don't do any of that. <laughs> here's what shifted that. And here's what makes sales easy. Okay. And here's what makes your offers an easy yes. When your messaging does the pre-selling, when you're sharing content that is so spot on for your yes client, and you just say, you know, give them a call to action. Here's my program. If this is you, X, Y, Z or true, reach out to me. When they reach out, when you're really clear who you serve and how, they're already going to be like more than halfway there with the sale. Yeah. Right? And then eventually, yes. like mostly I have and some of my clients have now too, you can have let go of sales calls altogether and sell in messenger, right? And just there's a process for that too, where people they'll buy 20K offers in Messenger. No joke when they can really, it's a process. You build your muscle on that. I certainly had to build my muscle on that too. Um, and you're not selling at all, right? They want to buy. You just make sure they're a good fit, right. answer some questions. And right. um, that sales process gets really easy. Or sales calls that were an hour long that needed a lots of follow-up. They can move to being a 45-minute call and then a 30-minute call, right? It just, you can, you can tighten that up and save yourself some time. And you never have to convince mm -hmm. anyone, right? Because mm -hmm. they come pretty sure. Like, I, I know I need to hire you. <laughs> That's the yeah, idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, th that was awesome. Those three tips that was so succinct, so simple. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, really powerful. So uh, I absolutely love that. So simplify and multiply. That is your um, um, baseline don't know what to call it. That's my brand. And then <laughs> that's my brand. That's your brand. That's okay. Thank brand. you. That's your brand. <laughs> that's your brand program. Yeah, and sure. then, um, I know because, um, you kind of mentioned it there, but I'm also in your group where you yeah. talk about getting people to six figures and seven figures. Yeah. So you want to talk a little bit about those programs and the type of people that you're looking for in there? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, my quantum leap program is my first level program where I teach these foundations we just talked about, um, offers, messaging, sales process. So for what, what happens is some women get to six figures, but they create this really complicated model. So I sort of, Oh my gosh, I did that. I did that at first. I did it. <laughs> I, I did. It. Yeah, totally. It's a thing. Um, so I sort of head that off. They've been doing all the things, but, but haven't been growing. And then they just simplify and literally do multiply, right? Suddenly they're selling their 3k offer, you know, like oh, three in a month, all of a sudden to their 3k offer. Whereas before they were making it too complicated for people to buy their messaging was confusing. So that we focus on the found like mastering those foundations to get to six figures. 
Um, then the next level program, Bold Vision Circle, is for someone who's close to or just over six figures, like that six to multi six figure um, kind of level and their business is complicated, right? Or, or they're working really hard and they're burning mm. out and, you know, they're having some, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. mindset issues, yeah. they're having some anxiety because they're like, I can't scale this. This is heavy. This is hard. So we really... So basically we take what's complicated and make it more simple so they can actually scale mm -hmm. up. And then my next, my third level program is the million dollar circle. So <laughs> for those are for the women that are already at or past multiple six figures and are ready to do that seven figures in 12 months um, and really like scaling, building their team, um, really aligning their vision. A lot of these women are like, big into the impact endeavors they want to make now and you know more bigger uh, bigger opportunities for visibility and influence in their industry and uh, really going for that on a at a whole different plane so um, that those those women are fun to serve and it's completely different conversations in each program right of what happens you know when I work with them mm -hmm. one -to one and also in our um, our mastermind calls in those programs because you know, it's a different mindset for each level of business and there's no bad or wrong for where you're at now. You know, every, lots of people. No, say, it's just where you are, where you are right? Lots and of what you need to learn. Right. Lots of people say, I want to make multi six figures or a million dollars. You just, you ha do have to build those foundations so that you're actually right. enjoying the journey. That's so important yes. to me that women are, have time for their family. That was so important to me, obviously, with having a special needs daughter who, you know, needs, needs me or her aid to eat, you know, shower, everything, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so that I'm not bogged down by my business. And I want women to be able to, you know, enjoy life and, and be able to have that freedom and flexibility. Um, because yeah, there's, there's enough on women's plates already. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You can be mm -hmm. a badass entrepreneur and make great, great money, but um, not have to burn yourself out and um, not enjoy the journey. I want you to enjoy the journey. Yeah, you know, I think that's one of the mistakes I made in the beginning was I was so focused on getting to six figures as fast as I could, because I wanted to prove something to Perfect. myself and my former boss. Yeah. Um, that I really didn't enjoy the journey. I was so focused on the end. And when I got to the six figures, I was like, now what? I'm not happy. And I had to reassess and go, what did I do? Yeah. And that was a mistake I made was yeah. focusing on that end result rather than enjoying the journey. So I'm really glad you said that, Joy. Yeah, and, I've, and probably a lot of people listening here have experienced some sort of burnout, whether it was, you know, diagnosed or, you know, physical, <laughs> like health issues, like I did, like I said, back in 2008, where I was just like, I think I was way beyond burnout, frankly, by the time I realized it. So I think that was one of the reasons that I played a little small those first five years in business, because mm. I had this, my, my mind was kind of protecting me. Like, mm. you don't want this to get mm. too overwhelming. You've been in burnout before, you know, all those yeah. health challenges you had are gone now, but you don't want them to come back. Right. <laughs> so there it's really right. important to be self-aware as you're growing that's that things from the past, like you said, how you've been treated by a boss or burnout that you've had in the past, mm -hmm. that those will all come into mm -hmm. the picture. Pretty much anything yeah. you've ever struggled with in life. <laughs> it's like business. Right. Is Absolutely. Best. Business is is the best personal growth journey, I believe that there is. It just it takes you through the ringer in yes. every area, but but in a really good way. Like you become the best version of yes. yourself at the same time if you're willing to stay in the room. I agree. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. yeah. So when you think back, um, and I know you do a lot of reflection and self and work on yourself and all of that, it shows because you're, you just are a beacon of light for the world. And I, and I love that about you. If you were right now, knowing everything, you know, right now, if you were starting from scratch with your business, mm -hmm. what would you do different? Mm -hmm. What do you feel like is the uh, top one or two things that you didn't do well or would do differently, anything like that? I was resistant to getting help. I was resistant to, mm. I would, I would 
buy things like courses or programs where I wasn't getting any individual mm -hmm. support, but I resisted getting help. And that was some of my stubbornness. You know, I'm going to kind of independent. <laughs> I can I'm do this like, on my own. This out. Like, look, all I had done, like my daughter yeah. went from not talking to being able to talk some and not that I, it was anything magic that I did, but, you know, I had overcome like a lot of big things and got through a lot of big things, but yeah. I was in a new world in online business, right? I was in a new world. And even my husband, who's project management, Six Sigma train, he would in the most loving way, like, let's have a meeting and like, let, let's see if we can help map out how you can get to your goals. And I would just be so resistant to it, probably because it was him. <laughs> too. Yes, I hear you. I mean, that, that is a thing. Your spouse is a different thing. Totally. Your spouse can totally yes. trigger you. And, you know, just like, I want to do it myself and, you know, any mm -hmm. other things. And we have, we've had a great marriage. I'm so grateful for that. But I was resistant. He had good ideas. Like when I think mm -hmm. back to it, like he would like sticky <laughs> notes on the wall and, you know, like <laughs> offers, messaging. Damn, why wasn't I listening? I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready right. to be coachable and teachable yet. Right. And if I would have been a little more receptive then and not so, I'll figure this out. And I'm sure that's some of my past story too. Um, if I would have got, gotten some one-to-one -one coaching sooner, you know, and just to help me see my patterns and, you know, how I was complicating it, then I probably wouldn't have waited five years before I was starting to get this, before I got on that path to six figures. So that would be my advice. It's like, those those courses and those things that are kind of passive where you're hiding behind your computer yeah they're good to a certain extent but you need to engage with real people and get some real support from someone who's been there and or has some some knowledge and expertise that could help you and that you can implement with some accountability too i totally agree with you mm -hmm. um you know there have been uh not in the recent past because I learned I learned my lesson on this but there were a few years where I thought I've got this I don't need a coach anymore that's just money I'm spending and so I spent like two years without a coach my business flatlined and began to decline and I'm like what's going on here yeah. so I got a coach and immediately shot up again and I'm like I will never be without a coach again it's so because they really can be a better mirror for you than you can be for yourself. Cause you're, you're right in the middle of it. You're too close. So you close can't see it. it. You're exactly right. You yeah. know, and, and some of it, it's the same. Like I, I always have a coach maybe I'll go a month or two break or sometimes I have two things going. Yeah. On, like I do but right not now. a year or two, like <laughs> I did. <laughs> right. Right. Sometimes you need a break and you know, there'll be times where you sign up for a program or work one-to-one -one with a coach and you don't quite, I can think of some some like this that I invested in and like, oh, that was 12K. I don't feel like I got my 12K kind of right. recoup directly from what I did there, but I learned right. so much. It was a, like, That's a right. Facebook, it was like a Facebook ads and funnel course. Right. And it, it helped yeah. me to see, I don't want to do Facebook ads and funnels. <laughs> I mean, right. I exactly. Mean, and sometimes okay. that's what we need to learn. That's what we don't want to do. The clarification for me was worth hundreds of thousands of dollars when I turn yes. to different directions. And this just does not feel aligned. I don't care what the experts are saying. I'm going to learn a simpler way. So, um, you know, don't let that kind of uh, um, derail you. If you feel like, oh, I signed up for something and it felt kind of off or I don't feel like I got what I paid for. And I mean, there are some programs that just aren't great about delivering on what they say they're going to deliver on. But every mm -hmm. experience, when you make that investment in yourself, it's, it's a, it's a commitment in the direction you want to go. Even if it's just, That's right. you know, like it's slightly not exactly That's where right. you wanted it to hit. It's moving forward yeah. because you put more skin in the game, you know, at the same time. Yeah. So, if, um, that's, so not everyone's going to be a, an exact hit, you know, like, oh, right. you know, I scaled so much well <laughs> in this program. <laughs> it's just, I've been yeah. enough to know that I just trust my intuition right. with what's the right decision and I'll get what I need from it. And it'll be, it'll be great. Yeah. yeah. And two things on that one is even if what you're learning is how you don't want to run your business, you're learning a lot from that, yes. right? 
Um, and that's what I tell people who are like, you know, you're not perfect. You're, you got typos. You, you <laughs> stutter sometimes or whatever. I'm like, so make a note that when you're running a business, that's what you want to not do. Cause that's important to you. Yes. yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, cause there's always things you can learn from all of that. Absolutely. Um, the other thing I hear you saying, um, which uh, reading between the lines here a little bit, which I absolutely did wrong myself was I wasn't w willing to risk paying well for a coach in the beginning. So I would find coaches who weren't very expensive. Mm -hmm. And what I finally realized was I was undervaluing the level of coaching I really needed to help me grow. And the coaches I was paying for were really at the same level I was at. Yeah. And I needed a coach two, three, four times higher than I was so that they could help me see what I didn't know yet. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's like, if you've got that ambition and that drive and you know, you're smart, you just need some guidance along the way. Don't play small right. when it comes to investing. Mm -mm. And same thing too, exactly. when it comes to, you know, things that include mastermind groups or when you're going to, you know, have some mm -hmm. peers and colleagues in a program, you want to be in elevated conversations, conversations with people right. who are at the level that you're at, right? It just does, right. you know, or higher. Or higher, or higher, right? So you're learning from them and where you want to be. Um, make sure you're in the right room. Don't be in a room with, you know, newbies if you're already past six yes. figures. There's not. It's just yeah. not an energetic match for anybody, right? So I don't want to be the smartest person in my mastermind. <laughs> right. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you you know how they say in real estate, you don't want to have the most expensive house in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Right. That's how I am in the masterminds. Yeah. I want everybody in there. I want to be surrounded by people who are doing better than I am, who are smarter than I am, yeah. who are doing whatever better than I am so I can learn from them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And just like knowing what's a match to for what you need right then. Like there are times where, um, if, let's say we just put it into two categories, although for the work I do, I believe they really merge together, but let's say strategy versus mindset. You know, there are times where I went and hired a hypnotherapy coach, right? Because I was like, I need some of this mindset work and some of this old stuff, you know, from trauma, yes. you know, has, has come up for yes. me and it's affecting my day-to-day -day business operations, you know, or if you're stuck in anxiety or fear, you know, you might need more on the mindset side of things, right? Um, or if you're, you know, it's like you're running into complication or your strategy is not working, you know, what's the focus, you know, what, what type of strategy do you want? What type of strategy don't you want? Find someone who aligns. Right. With that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I have noticed the same thing. So what, what I feel like I've seen and see what you think about this is when I was first starting my business and as I was growing, um, having one coach could do everything for me. They could help my mindset. They could help my strategy. They could help any kind of issues I had with that, that hold me accountable. And as I continued to grow, then I was able to see, oh, here is an area that I'm really struggling with. Yeah. Let me find a coach who really can yeah. help me fix this faster. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? That's what I'm talking about, right? Like knowing when you yeah. need something more holistic, uh, comprehensive, right. that's, you know, that's a thing too. And that can be nice to be a part of something. Um, but also knowing like, I need an expert in this one thing. Right. And right. You know, I've had one month coaching engagements with experts that were good at like one thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, absolutely. Learn from them. I'll pay them well right. to, to see what right. I can see and see the missed opportunity and okay, you know, learn it grow. So um, that's, yeah. it, that's a great conversation. I think a lot of people are in, they think of it as um, like spending money, right? Like, oh, I'm yes. spending versus investing. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. If you plan yes. on growing to six, multi six figures, a million dollars, you're going to have quote unquote investments. <laughs> you're going to have team. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I put them all in the same category. Like you're going to pay, you know, this much money for something, you know, so mm -hmm. you're going to be spending money. That's part of just mm -hmm. learning to be that type of business owner. So it helps Absolutely. build your muscle. It's a muscle you build, right? That you get used to it. Yeah. 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 And um, 
I love that you said it's a muscle because risk is one of the things that I held back on in the beginning. I wasn't really willing to take bigger risks, just like paying not as well as I should have for a coach. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a risk I was willing to take. Yeah. And now that, you know, now I challenge myself. How right. scared am I? Am I scared? <laughs> I literally check my gut. Am I scared? It, you know, my goal for the year revenue goal or whatever it is, you know, getting right. visible in a certain way or, yeah. you know, the level of coaching I want. Does this feel scary? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, it's not big enough. Ah, uh, that's a great way to measure it, right? Like I'm not stretching if it's not feeling yeah, uncomfortable. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, I, 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 in fact, I have a sign above my desk. If your dreams don't scare you, they aren't big enough. Because <laughs> that. that works for me. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and it's like knowing what keeps your eye on the, the longer term goal, right? Because you're going to have... Right things that in the moment, in the day, in the week, that like, oh, that was a failure. Oh, this isn't working out, you know? And and mm -hmm. that does not define where you're going, right? Or what's possible for you. Right. So just, you right. know, keep your, keep your dreams where you want to be, you know? It just, you just have to, sometimes the way to get there isn't as straight as we want it to be because we're learning, you know, we're mm -hmm. doing something you've never mm -hmm. done before, right? And, and learning mm -hmm. it. Oh, yeah. Well for sure. But it's so worth, it's so worth it to have the freedom to have your own schedule and to work with, spend your time working with people that you want to be spending time working with and you want to help and the impact that you want to make at the same time. That's for sure. So I love, I love that, um, that quote. It's great. So Joy, I could talk to you all day long. In fact, I just, can I just come and stay at your house for a while? Sure. Come on. We'll go to the beach. <laughs> We'll go to the beach and drink a margarita. <laughs> Ooh, well, that sounds awesome. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I know there's others listening right now going, wow, Joy is really lighting my fire here. So can you talk a little bit about the kind of people that you work with and how they can get in touch with you yeah, or learn absolutely. a little bit more about you? Absolutely. Sure. Well, I recommend if you want to see more content, I have videos and lots of going deeper on these topics that um, we've been discussing here today in my Simplify to Multiply Facebook group. So all you have to do is go to Facebook and type in Simplify to Multiply with Joy Buffalini and it'll pop up. <laughs> Join the group. Um, and you can also, you can feel free to send me a message on Facebook if you'd like to, um, or you can email me. It's just joy at joybuffalini.com. I'd love to hear from you, connect with you, hear more about your business. Um, and even if you're just new to business, join the group. Like that content is going to help you. And if you're interested in potentially working together, um, send me a message. I work with those who have been in business for at least a year um, or at least making one to 5K a month is, you know, your average. That's, that would be a perfect fit to get started with this simplify to multiply system. But I have lots in my group who are just in that learning building phase and I share tons of valuable content there too. And I'm excited to, to help you. I don't have low ticket offer, offers. I just share that level of content for free. So you'll get lots of value for free um, if you're not quite ready um, to move into a Simplify to Multiply program. So thanks for the opportunity to share, Kathy. Yeah, and um, would you like to talk about any of the other levels of programs that you have? If somebody's listening and they're like, well, I'm past 5,000 a month. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm into that 10 and 20,000 a month. Absolutely. Where do I go? Yeah. So cleanse and leap is that one to five, um, bold vision circle is my next level program for those that are in that six to 15 K a month level, you know, maybe up to 20, depending on your business model and your audience size that matters too. I didn't say this in the, in the interview either is that you don't need a huge audience to scale. You don't need a huge audience. I talk with women who have like 20,000, 50,000 email lists, and they're just barely making six figures, right? That does yes. a, a large email list does not mean you're making good money. But on no. the other side of that, you know, you could, some of my women who are having 20K months, they have an email list of 400 people and just post consistently yes. on social media. Like, it's totally doable. So, and then there's the million dollar circle for, for women who are past the 200 K mark, you know, between, you know, somewhere 200 up to about 600 who are scaling to a million in the next year or two. So, um, and there's a smaller percentage of women who are there, but once you get there, you know, it's like the foundations to scale are more nuanced. 
right? So it's like a different type of looking at your business model um, when you get there. And there's another level of simplification and lightening things up and a different way of thinking too. So, um, so yeah, I keep my business model simple with just three offers. I don't have 10 or 15 or anything. <laughs> That's what yeah. helps me to manage it all and help give everyone right. impact as well. So do you want everybody to go to Simplify to Multiply and then find out about the other programs in there? Oh, great question, because I do have one other group. You're right. <laughs> and I know this because I'm in that other group. I know, absolutely. <laughs> my Simplify to Multiply group is like my brand group, but I do share exclusive content. So you have to be past six figures and answer a few questions to come into the group. And there's some valuable content there. So most are at that multiple six figure level, but, um, and it's called Make Your Million Dollar Vision Real. So just look that up on, I'm sorry, make your million dollar business real is the name of the Facebook group. So I'll share that in the, for the show notes, if you'd like me to, Kathy, okay. thank you. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, and as somebody who's followed you for years and I've been in your Simplify and Multiply and now I'm in the million dollar one, um, the, you give actionable things to do on just about a daily basis. I mean, anytime I pop in there, you've got a new video that inspires me or makes me think of something in a different way. And your groups are very active and they're in there supporting each other and you're supporting them. So if anybody's looking for something and they're not quite sure where to go, I highly recommend Joy's groups. So uh, go so check them out on there. Facebook. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't wait to um, I, I, if I have a, if I'm having a low day, I'll go get in your group and go, what's she got going on today? For sharing that. Isn't that funny? <laughs> you just don't know how much you impact people. And that's what's so important to me that I know I'm going to impact lots of people, you know, who all, I may never even know how I've affected them, how the content that really, this is what I teach my clients. I could have said this earlier too. There's only three things you need to focus on really every day. Serving your current clients, share messaging on a consistent basis, right? That's just speaking right to the head of the people you're meant to serve. And then engage with people who reach out. Like it's really that simple. But that middle one, when I'm serving in my content, I'm in the same energy as when I'm serving my clients. To me, that's an important part of my give to the world. Um, a lot of people yes. think of content sharing as like, oh, I got to check the box, better send an email, you know, <laughs> you know, of course, yes, it's marketing, but at the same time, it can be service too. So thanks for reflecting that. I'm so happy to hear, yeah, but to inspire and, and to keep it practical too. Like the, sometimes you just need the one, two, three, uh, reframe for things. Yeah. And you really do. And I, and I greatly value that. And, you know, I, you and I have such similar philosophies. I totally agree with you. I give just as much value in my free content um, as I do to those who have paid me for something because um, you don't know how you're impacting their lives. Exactly. And I'm like you, I want to impact people's lives. I'm not, Yes, I love making money. Yes, I love this lifestyle. But if I wasn't helping people also, I would quit in a heartbeat. Exactly. And I'm sure you feel that same way, Joy. Exactly. That's what made me keep going and not give up when I wasn't making the traction that I wanted, you know, is like, no, yeah. you know, you, yeah, I could make money somewhere else, but it just, my heart wouldn't mm -hmm. be there. Right. And that's so important. Yeah. You align your business with your heart and your, um, the impact that you want to make. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Joy, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. And um, I hope everybody can tell. I think she, Joy is amazing. Even if she had never been in Oprah Magazine, I would have also thought she was amazing. <laughs> really, those, those things don't mean as much as people, you know, think they do. You know, it's just, it's, it's oh, yeah, they do. what you do. In oh, the yeah, they do. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's mostly about what you do in the everyday, you know, that matters. I agree with you Absolutely. that it's mostly what you do in the yeah. everyday. I agree with you there. So, thank Great. you so much. Well, thank you. This was such a pleasure. And I look forward to meeting your listeners online. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.